open, prosperous, and secure Indo-Pacific, and our sh shared resolve to elevate our strategic technology partnership, including defense energy, defense, clean energy, and space. The leaders will also discuss ways to further expand our educational exchanges and people-to-people -people ties, as well as our work together to confront common challenges from climate change workforce development and health security. With that, Songming, you just want to kick us off? Yeah, so two topics. Um, on the debt talks, obviously the president said, and the president and the congressional leaders said they've directed their staffs to start talking. So can you just give us any updates on that? Did staff level discussions begin last night? Are they beginning today? And what can you tell us with the latest? So one thing I can say, look, as you all know, the, the conversation we feel the president feels between the congressional leaders uh, were productive. It was a productive meeting about a path forward to make sure that America does not default on its debt for the first time in our history. Uh, and everyone in the meeting understood the risk of default. It would erase millions of jobs, trigger a recession, devastate retirement accounts, and increase borrowing costs. Uh, and so the, 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 the president made it clear that default is not an option, and we and Congress needs to get to work. As you, I just mentioned, he laid out his uh, his budget. Budget, what he sees uh, moving forward for the country, he's happy to have that conversation. But when it comes to uh, defaulting, that's something that Congress should do. As it relates to uh, staff meetings, uh, the, st the staff is going to, uh, the staff of congressional leaders and our staff at the White House are going to meet daily uh, until uh, until they meet again, the leaders meet again on, uh, on Friday. So that discussion is going to be ongoing. Uh, certainly don't have anything in particular specific uh, to lay out of how those conversations are going to go. We always keep try to keep those conversations private between uh, congressional uh, congressional members and uh, and the White House. But that is uh, indeed happened. And can I ask on the state visit, um, are, are the optics problematic for the White House with the White House giving India sort of the honor of a state visit when there are obvious human rights concerns under Prime Minister Modi and the fact that there are clear differences between the U.S. and India when it comes to Russia and Ukraine. So as we do with uh, other nations around the world, we regularly engage with with Indian government officials at senior levels on human rights concerns, uh, including freedom of religion or belief. That is something that the president regularly does. Uh, we encourage all countries to uphold their human rights obligations, commitments, and to work towards uh, building inclusive societies. As you know, this is a president who has had decades of experience of leader-to-leader -leader relationship. This is an important relationship as we speak about the Indo-Pacific, as we talk about how to move forward in that region. And so the president believes this is an important uh, uh, relationship that we need to continue and build on. As it, as it relates to human rights, as I just looked out, this is a conversation that we have with other nations around the world. The president's never shy, never shies away to, uh, to have that conversation with leaders. On the debt ceiling, do you have a sense of timing of when they'll meet on Friday? And then secondly, where does the president stand on defense cuts? That's come up a couple times. In, in, the, in their spending? In, in, yes, in their, where does in he their, uh, in their plan? In their, well, no, in the, just with respect to general to cutting spending, where does he stand on potential defense cuts? A couple of people, including him and the OMB director, have said that some people think they should be off the table. Does the president also think defense cuts should be off the table? So, in any so, look, he's he's willing to negotiate about the budget. He put forth his budget, um, and so that's going to that's going to move forward. It's certainly not going to negotiate on the specifics because uh, if I start opening that door, then we're going to talk about other pieces as well. So I'm not going to go into uh, into negotiations from here. Uh, I don't have a time on Friday when the leaders are going to get to come, uh, the four leaders are going to come to the White House to talk to the president to continue the conversation they have yesterday. Certainly, as we have done, as I did just a couple days ago, we'll lay out uh, where that meeting is going to happen, when that meeting is going to happen as soon as we have that locked in. The uh, uh, president uh, refused to rule out a short-term um, debt limit increase yesterday. Is a short-term fix the best option at this point? Look, so did Speaker McCarthy. He said that the short-term uh, uh, fix is not on the table, as it should not be. We agree. This is something that uh, Congress needs to get to work on. This is their con constitutional duty. We've been very clear about that. The president was very clear about that yesterday, uh, and nothing has changed. We didn't. We are not negotiating on the debt limit. That is not something that we're doing. There sh that should be done without conditions. We've been very, very clear about that. When it comes to regular order of speaking about appropriations and spending, the president is happy to have that conversation as he put forth uh, a budget that talks about how he's going to cut spending, but still invest in America. We've laid that 
out. The president laid that out on March 9th. And so we're going to have that conversation. We're going to have that negotiation uh, with Congress, uh, with congressional leaders. Can, can I just Sorry. clarify okay. on, you, you said on the short term that he agrees with McCarthy that it should not be on the table, but he said the opposite yesterday, that he was not ruling he was out not ruling a out. short term yeah. increase. Here's the thing. What we, so number one, certainly not going to negotiate in public about any of this, but what we've been very clear about, which has not changed, is that Congress needs to act. Congress needs to take action. They've done this 78 times since 1960 and is something that the president had also said, we have never defaulted in the 200 plus years of our history. So they need to get to, to, to take that action. Not the best option with everything on the table. That is the best option. That is right now the best option right now okay. is for short term. Uh, the best option right now is for Congress to do their constitutional duty and to get this done. That is the best option. And the president was very clear about that and has been. And as President Biden also, you know, yesterday he said, you know, he is considering dealing his trip to the G7. Uh, he, what has to happen for the president to make this trip? Look, I'm not going to get into hypotheticals, but the president said yesterday he is committed to going. Uh, to the G7, to G7 on this trip to uh, Japan and Australia, and also, as you know, uh, uh, New Papua Guinea, as we announced uh, yesterday. Uh, but preventing default is the single most important thing on his agenda. That is the single most important thing as it relates to delivering for the American people. That said, the president is the president. I've said this. He has said this wherever he is, wherever he travels. And the, Amer the American economy is always a top priority for him. Preventing default uh, is a Congress is Congress's constitutional duty and obligation. And that's what he wants to see. And look, as you all know, they're going to talk on Friday and we'll see where conversations go from there. I know you don't want to talk about hypotheticals, but he said it's possible that he wouldn't go if it goes down to the wire. So can you talk about contingency planning with the VP go? Are you reading her into, you know, everything, all the materials? So as it relates to the VP, I said this yesterday in the briefing room, they have consulted. The two of them have talked about uh, talked about uh, this process, talked about how it's, and she clearly agrees, and how negotiating on the debt limit is not an option and how uh, if they want to go back to regular order and have, and as we're trying to do with the conversation yesterday, go back to regular order and have a conversation about spending and appropriations, that's the way we should move forward. Obviously, they're partners in this, uh, and so she has been clearly uh, uh, engaged in the conversations with the president. Look, as you said in the top of your question, I'm just not going to get into hypotheticals. We're going to, they're going to meet again. The four leaders with the president are going to have another conversation on Friday. Their teams, as I, as Sung Min had asked, uh, are going to meet every day until uh, Friday uh, to continue the conversations that were started. Uh, the president felt the conversation was productive uh, yesterday, and I'm just going to leave it there. Green on Fed Title 42. Uh, while the, pres the president said it's going to be chaotic for a while, can you define what that timeline means? Is it days, weeks, or months? And given that you all have had years to prepare and we've been hearing about the work you've been doing on diplomatic issues and deterrence and processing speed, is that expected chaos a failure given that you've known this was coming? So let's be very clear here. Um, the pre president has been dealing with a system that has been broken for decades. So I want to be very clear about that uh, since day one. He put in, he put forth a comprehensive immigration uh, 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 plan legislation, and he is using the tools that are in front of him to deal with the challenge that we're seeing at the border. And Congress, Republicans in Congress in particular, refuse. They literally refuse uh, to act. They refuse to come to the middle and meet us at the middle and come up with a real solution. What they have put forth thus far is going to make the situation at the, at the border worse. I talked about this yesterday in the briefing room. So we have put forth a robust multi-agency uh, plan. We're gonna hear from Secretary Mayorkas tomorrow in the briefing room. You all will have an opportunity to ask him questions. He just did, I know some of you may have missed it on the plane. He just did a, a uh, press conference uh, at, from DHS uh, just moments ago, speaking to this, so taking questions from uh, the press corps. He has been on television the last couple of days, being very, very uh, forthright and providing information. You've heard from uh, the Pentagon, you've heard from the Department of State on how we're moving forward and we have put processes in place, not just now, not just the last couple of days from the beginning of the year. So we've taken this very seriously. Republicans in Congress refuse to act. What we're seeing from Republican officials are political stunts, and we want to deal with the situation in a real way. 
Uh, going back to the Washington administration's plan B, if the asylum... Uh, you got to let your other colleagues ask a question. Okay. All right. But go ahead. I just, I just wanted to ask, what is the administration's plan B? If the I appreciate the, the energy, though. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. What is the plan B if the asylum rule is blocked in court? Look, um, right now, we're going to focus on the tools that we have in front of us that we are able to uh, put forth. I'm not going to get into um, le legalities here. That's not something that I do. Uh, certainly, if, if it gets there, that's something that Department of Justice will deal with. What I can say is we have put forth a, a robust plan. Uh, to deal with the situation. You've heard us talk about it in the past several months on what we put forth, whether it's the parolee program, countries that, uh, that we have seen some success in, uh, or, or whether it's ending a legal process, right? Legal, uh, legal immigration process. And so we've been very clear about this. We're going to continue to do the work. You all, uh, Secretary Mayorkas, conversation as we 